Hi, so my name is Matt Zimmerman. I'm an online platform manager. Um, whenever I give a talk, I always have to do this one part in the beginning where I say I work for the Springer Publishing Company, and some people know and some people don't, but there are two publishers called Springer. There's a very big German publisher called Springer Nature, which probably most people know of. They used to be called Springer Verlag. There's a very small publisher in New York that I work at called the Springer Publishing Company, and we're totally separate from them. We were founded by a member of this Springer family, but um, besides that, there's no connection. So um, we have about 60 employees. Um, we're primarily a textbook publisher for advanced practice nursing, which are people who are going to school to become a nurse practitioner or to get their doctor of nursing practice. Um, and we also publish in the graduate level for um, counseling and psychology. We do some test prep books. We do some journals, but we don't make most of our money off of journals. And um, originally, I was going to say I'm talking today about using annotation in a way that doesn't really create knowledge, that it's more of a tool. But the more I've been hearing other talks, I think actually I uh, accidentally discovered some things and created some knowledge, even though I was just trying to use it as a, a workflow tool. Um, so let me tell you what we were doing at Springer. Uh, when I started there three years ago, we didn't have our own online platform. Uh, we had our journals on a third party in Genta. And we sold some ebooks through Kindle, Apple iBook, and you know some licensing through EBSCO and things like that. If anyone else here works in college textbook world, print is still where we make most of our money. Um, Students like, like print books. But more and more, there's at least an expectation that there's going to be a digital component that comes with the book. And also, we wanted to um, start trying to maybe even sell some of our ebook collections into libraries. So we started our own, I mean, we built a new platform where we're putting both our books and journals. Um, it was, it's on a platform it's called Scolaris, which is uh, made by a company called Semantica, which is actually. Two months after we signed with them, they were bought by Highwire. So we're on a Highwire platform, but not the typical Highwire platform that, say, Jennifer was talking about earlier. Um, and so the issue we were facing is we had never had our books online before. We were doing them in HTML and PDF, and we were actually doing them at the chapter level. I, I, I'm kind of proud of the fact that we have DOIs for all of our chapters. We have keywords for all our chapters. We have abstracts, um, which is pretty neat. Um, the problem was, that, you know, we had, we had these converted into bits XML. We knew that XML was fine. It was well-formed and valid. But we really had no idea what these books would look like on a platform, especially since we were doing back issues, uh, back, I used to work in journals, back uh, <laughs> titles, um, which, uh, if you, again, if you work in the book world, books are just weird sometimes. Sometimes there's chapters, sometimes there's parts and chapters, sometimes there's units, parts and chapters. They don't have that kind of consistent format that journals do, um, especially if that book was made not with the thought of ever going online. So we, uh, we really had no idea what they were going to look like. So I was at the Highwire meeting two years ago, and Heather was giving a presentation on uh, Hypothesis. And I thought, oh, I said, this would be a great way for us to go through and proof and QA our books. Um, instead of having uh, typically what we do is proofreader or copy editor would, would look at the book and they would just record stuff in a spreadsheet. Now, I didn't need, these books were printed. They'd already been sold. They didn't need the detailed copy editing a book would do. I really just needed people to look at them and say, are all the chapters showing? You know, are the images showing OK? Are there any weird tables? Um, uh, you know, basically, do they look OK? Um, so yeah, so the idea was we would, uh, we had some freelance proofreaders, and I set them up with, uh, we had a, I made a private group, and I let them go through and mark up the books. Now, I, at first I thought, wow, I'm really clever uh, for having this idea, but apparently people have been doing this for a long time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you knew this, but before computers, proofreaders used to go through and mark things up, and even they used to, before the web, uh, they would do it too. So, uh, but really, there wasn't a great way, I think, to do it uh, in HTML before. I think uh, Hypothesis is really great for this. So, <clears throat> so the results, the editors, the proofreaders, they, they loved it, because they could just go through and bum, 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 mark tons of stuff up. They didn't have to be writing things down. They didn't have to write 
you know, in the third paragraph of, you know, chapter three. They loved it a little bit too much. Uh, 150 books, after we did 150 books, there was uh, 10,000 annotations. Now, is Matthias still here from Norton? Um, he had said when they proof their ebooks, they get a thousand per book, which I think is pretty crazy—a thousand um, errors or something. So this was still a lot. So this is—I mean, this is where I made the mistake, and I have to say I haven't really—we haven't been using it for about a year because one, we had this big influx of books, 400 books. Since then, we just do like 10 books a month. So um, we've been going back to doing it the old way with the spreadsheet. But I want to keep doing it, and I think there's just a few things that I need to do to make it work. Um, and also, this is also a call, if there's other people here who are doing this or who would like to do it, you know, I'd be happy to form a little interest <coughs> group or something to, to talk about this. Because I think it can be used in all sorts of, you know, not just QA, but proofing, part of the production process, you know, a lot of different ways. So the, the first mistake I made was, um, each chapter in our books is its own web page, and the book title isn't in the, the web page title. So when they were going through and marking these things up, and I went back into hypothesis, I really didn't have a, I didn't have a good way to know. I couldn't really quickly say, show me all the ones in this one book. Um, we could probably fix that easily next time by just having them tag it with the author name or something like that. But. You know, the, the horse had already left the, bar, left the barn on that one. Also, I probably should have had them have some sort of controlled list of, was this a typo, was this a dead link, uh, was this a missing image, so I could easily um, categorize them. But I really didn't have, a, a, I didn't tell them to do that either, so really what we ended up with was these 10,000 annotations. What I did was our, our third party typesetting vendor, I just had them look at each page, and if it was something they thought they could fix, they would comment on it and say, we're fixing this in the XML. If they looked at it and said, no, this is probably not an XML issue, it's probably a style sheet, or it's probably actually something wrong with the platform, I had them um, flag it for review. Um, and I would, I would get emails saying, you know, these ones are flagged for review. That's the way I knew to go back in and look at them and decide, you know, maybe that was something I needed to talk to Highwire about. Um, so, what would make this uh, easier? I think um, when the proofing is done, I probably ideally would like to just export all this out just into a spreadsheet so that I can just have a really quick um, high-level overview of, you know, is there a particular book that needs a lot of work? Um, are there particular issues? You know, I, I really don't want to, interacting with the um, annotations on a page-by-page -page level really isn't useful for this, so I think that's step one. Um, and then I guess the next question is, after that, do, you know, could the rest of the, does the rest of the workflow, does it have to happen in the annotation tool? I mean, is the annotation tool possibly really good just for the proofreaders? And after that, maybe I need to use the spreadsheet and dump it into some issue management thing or, um, or even just use the spreadsheet as a way to, to manage a workflow. But I'd still like to, to look at ways I think that the workflow could, some small changes that would make it easier. So one would be, if I was going through and triaging these annotations, at least currently, I can't go in and tag someone else's annotation. So if this proofreader made some comment, it would, if I could just go in and easily tag it and say either, you know, this isn't an issue or, or this is an image issue, like a way for me to categorize it, that would be good. Um, and then also when the, um, typesetter and XML people are done. Um, if there was a way that they could easily notify me that, hey, this is done, this is ready for you to, to look at and check. Again, it could be that they could just add a tag to the existing um, annotation saying complete or ready for review. And then this one's not 100% needed, but it would be good if there was some final thing I could do to sort of close out the annotation and say, yeah, this one's fixed, this one doesn't need to be looked at anymore. So. Um, but yeah, I think the, the most important thing is being able to do some export, and then these other things might uh, solve some of the issues. So um, let me just show you what our site looks like and some of the uh, annotations. Let's see. I, I really like this site, so I like showing it off. So we have, this is one of our, our most recent books. 
we released. Um, and you can see we have all, all the chapters. Um, I really like this because the chapter, this isn't generated from a table of contents in the book. It's actually generated from all the actual chapters in the, in the XML. Um, we don't have a lot of people who come here and buy these books online, but we do have, you know, our typical, our motto is that we put a scratch off code in our print books and then people come here and, and get access. Um, but we also sell them at the chapter level and, and we actually do get a lot of chapter sales. Um, so this is what a chapter would look like. Um, we have this nice focus view. I really, I know this has nothing to do with hypothesis, but or annotation, but I really like <laughs> like how the site like, looks. Um, so, so that's just what our, most of the site looks like. This. So an example of some annotations that had happened. So this was, um, I see. So this person, uh, whoop, sorry. Yep. So typical things like these. There were link, there were HTML there were hyperlinks in the text, but they weren't actually hyperlinked. Um, and then some styling issues, like some things were italicized that weren't supposed to be, uh, and things like that. Um, so I think again, I think the next steps would be. I, I would like to pick this up again. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, was maybe this just an issue of scale? Like 200, we're never going to have to do 400 books at once again. So maybe doing 10 a month will be a lot easier, and I won't get overwhelmed by 10,000 annotations. Um, but I do, I do, I would like to keep working on it and try to, you know, tweak some of these things to to make it more usable. So if anyone else wants to join me, please do. Um, oh, and I said I didn't think this had been a. I didn't think this had been a knowledge uh, that I wasn't developing new knowledge by doing this, but it was really interesting going having people go through and look at all of our um, uh, look at all of our chapters. So we discovered a lot of things, like a lot of things that just really don't work well online, like a lot of big tables in books. So now we've you know we've come up with a lot of best practices, even though we're still mainly print. You know we're trying to convince people not to put if they really need to have big tables. Just include them online. Just include them as a spreadsheet. You know, we can we can add a lot of supplementary material online. Um, one really interesting thing, and I had an example, and then I closed my browser. Is um, <laughs> when you when you write a book, you have a title that's like uh, radiology, and then you have chapters like foot, chest, uh, arm, leg. But when you have about fifty different books like that, you end up with a fifty chapters called foot or a bunch of chapters called chest pain. Uh, a lot of, uh, similarly how I'm sure a lot of your journals have a thousand articles called book review or editorial or something like that. So we've, we've instituted a new best practice where when we name chapters, we need to have the chapters be more descriptive because they're going to start to get discovered on their own. Um, they're going to get purchased on, uh, on their own. So we need to start thinking of our chapters as um, bits of information that can stand, stand on their own. So, um, yeah, that's it. So, let me see. How did I do? I'm good. So, oh, perfect. Questions for Matt? Oh, good. Um, this is great. Really interesting. Uh, quick question. You were talking about the... Um, the annotation workflow for the editors. Yes. Was that happening on like a like an open URL? Was that in some kind of closed environment? Like oh oh, <laughs> that's a really good question. We had a staging site that the um, that Highwire had for us, um, so we were doing it on there. Which I know one of the uh, the composition professors the other day was talking about how when websites go away, that that was one of the problems because they. Uh, that staging site went away, and so we really don't have any record of, you know, that's a bunch of orphan. But, so, it's a good question, because right now we don't really have a staging site, so we have been, we, you know, we load the book, it's in this embargoed uh, state, but lots of times we do just actually make it live and figure, well, no one's going to find it. Um, we can probably QA it in a short amount of time. But yeah, ideally, we... We're hoping we can work with Highwire to get uh, a staging site because, yeah, that that was one of the issues. Yeah. So. Uh, 